defense six, wins six, it. Six, three, How about six, that? Three. That might be the first match point I've ever seen Andy win like that. <laughs> Serving night for Andy Roddick. Emphasis on terrific. 77% and a, just a fine effort by Gimmelstock. Well, the crowd, a lot of you know, very, very knowledgeable fans here, Ted, they know this is his last match here. So he felt good about that round of applause. We're going to hear from both guys. And we should start off with uh, Justin. Let's go down to Michael Barkin. Mike. Justin. Well, you said you wanted to make an entertaining last match of your career, and it certainly was that. Well, playing well was my first priority. Uh, you know, I just have a lot of respect for Andy to play my last match at the U.S. Open against such a great champion. I gave it my all, kind of like I did my whole career, but uh, just not enough. But that's, uh, I think, a lot to be proud of as well. Absolutely. When you, when you took a look at the draw and you saw, of all people, you're going to play your good friend Andy Roddick in the first match at the U.S. Open, what went through your mind? Well, one of my good friends I spoke to right as, um, well, two stories. First of all, Andy and I talked pretty regularly. Uh, I was practicing in the morning the day the draw came out, and uh, Andy texted me. I, I looked and it said, can you believe this? And I, did, I figured he was just talking about girls because that's usually what we talk about. <laughs> so then another friend... Um, called me and told me I played Andy, so I texted him right back. The guy stonewalls me for three days <laughs> until I see him here. That's definitely Jimmy's influence for sure. Um, but, uh, but he was great. He gave me some tickets tonight, so it's all good. Uh, and uh, he let me hang in there for a set. Well, that first set, you're two points from winning. Hold on, the... that, was, that was the first story. I got two. Oh, you got two more. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, you're going into our business, but not just yet, okay? Look, I'm going to delay this as long as possible. This is all I got. So, uh, um, Andy's got like six more matches here and ten more years. This is it for me. So, anyway, the second story is, let's move it along. My friend goes, you play Roddick again. Does he request you? <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, he would if he could, but it doesn't work like that. Can I ask the next one? Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Now, w uh, when you talk about the first... The first set, two points from within, with winning a set, is that the key right there for you? Yeah, that was the key for me to win the set, then it would have won in four. Um, but, uh, uh, All right, now. Well, I'll tell you, your 11th U.S. Open, sixth time on this court, and while you never won a championship, you long ago won our hearts. And I know you're now endeavoring into our business, so we want to get you doing that right now, if you could. So would you interview your friend Andy Roddick right now? Sure. Okay, here we go. Justin Gimmelstock, when you're done, just say Ted. When you're done. I'm not just venturing into this business, but I'm taking his job next year. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Um, you don't know how my back feels. That's it, guys. Anyway, Andy, congratulations. What do you think were the keys to the match? <laughs> Besides you being way better than me. <laughs> in all honesty, it was a tough match because I was trying to, like, not talk to you in the locker room beforehand and be all tough, and I'm just thinking a million thoughts, and then, uh, you know, we're going to miss one of the funniest guys on tour, man. You always left it out there, and you did that tonight as well. Thank you very much. Usually I have an earpiece for this, and they tell me what to ask, but I'm just going to go with the moment, all right? Andy, what do you think you have to work on to progress through the draw? You know, we all want you to take this title or at least play uh, James in the final. <laughs> Well, you know, Justin, uh, there's a lot I could approve upon tonight. Um, 
Guys, I'm joking. Come on. I mean, all, all of a sudden we, uh, no, uh, I, I'm just happy to be through to the second round and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be almost through with this, uh, this uh, interview because it's about the most awkward thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> Oh, we're staying out here all night, guys. <laughs> I mean... All right, Andy. Uh, yeah, they don't want to hear from me. What, uh, what will you miss most, Justin? This right here. I mean, uh, I don't get it as often as you do, but I mean that feeling walking on center court. It's tough to get that in real life, so uh, we've lived kind of in a... We live in kind of a fantasy world. I, um, I've been lucky to be a part of it for, for 12 years. Um, I've always just kind of hung on and, and just tried to do the best I could and had to compete with real talents like yourself. So I, uh, I'm going to go move on to something that's a little easier on my body and my mind uh, into the booth. But uh, I'm going to still be a big fan of yours. Likewise. Justin Gimmelstow. <laughs> Oh, hey, John, Ted, back to you guys. Oh, one more question. John, since I got you up there, my charity event in December, you're in, right? There we go. You guys got it right there. That's great. That's the first time, yeah. though, anybody has ever taken the mic from Justin. How about that for Ryan? Right. That's the best that play he made tonight. Knows what he's doing. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's crazy. So. That's good. That's good. He's got to work with the day I want to work with, right? <laughs> that's right, that's right. So we just, <laughs> I heard December, sometime in December. That turned out to be sort of cool, though. I, mean, I, gotta say. I think I, that was you know, very, absolutely. it was wild and wacky. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I, I always admired about Roddick, I think he handles the public aspect of his job very well. <laughs> I love his candor when he turns it. He says, look, this is just awkward. He wrenches the microphone away. And you have got to, Ted, you yeah. may be worth this. I'll split this with you. I'll pay three courts. We'll get a bed right now. And we'll offer up Justin to stay on the court. So you can sleep on bed tonight. Okay? He, he'd probably go for it. He doesn't want to leave. Absolutely. 